All right, here we go. We ready? I guess. Welcome to M Vibes Podcast. Home of good music, good libations, and good vibes. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the season finale of season four M Vibes Podcast. Oh, what do we got here? We're back at Tommy's Pub. Uh, really, really quick. Um, well, not quick, whatever. Um, a legendary hardcore wrestler passed away this past week. By the time this airs, it'll, it'll, it'll be a long time gone, but I uh, feel like we need to do something for this man. Uh, cheers, rest in peace to uh, Terry Funk. And if you can hear what's playing, uh, you know who my guest is today. Uh, this is uh, Anti Scene Funk U. And special guest today here, uh, Jeff Motherfucking Clayton, man. So, uh, Welcome to the show, man. Pleased to be here, man. Yeah. Thank you for having me. What are you drinking today, Jeff? What is that? I am drinking Yingling. Yingling. Y- yingling. What are the oldest? Oldest American brewery. Yeah. Oldest American brewery in America. They're out of Pittsburgh <laughs> and Tampa, right? No, they were from uh, up around the Philadelphia, New Jersey area. That's right. Yeah. But 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 they also brew in Tampa too, I think. They might. They, they very well may. Uh, they may. I don't even I, know who owns I, them I, now. I started either. drinking these uh, when we used to play up around Philadelphia a lot. And right. They hadn't gotten distribution to the rest of the country yet. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I used to bring cases of it back. Yeah. Yes. That was back in the uh, yeah. 18, 1800s. Right. 1800s. Yeah. Um, yeah. We brought it back. <laughs> no, <I'm> <laughs> no, actually, uh, until like four or five years ago, Yingling wasn't available in uh, Michigan either. So I used to bring it up to my brother in law. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. we didn't I mean. Yeah, they did not. They did not have wide distribution. Luckily, North Carolina gets a lot of really good beer. So, yeah. And I got uh, Noble's Blackberry Peach Crumble Hard Cider. And, of course, uh, the old faithful uh, Jameson. How about you, Ernie? I am having the uh, Tommy's Pub L uh, from Pilot. So it's their... Shout out to Javier for that label. Yeah, that awesome label. Yeah. Sign this. I don't know if it's focusing, but... Uh, yeah. Excellent. Well, I mean... The, the pub ale has always been excellent. So. <clears throat> yeah. And slapping Tommy's name on it is even better. Yeah. I thought they weren't going to make it anymore, but they did. So awesome. Yeah. 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 We weren't sure at first if they were going to make another batch. Yeah. And uh, I guess it went so well to begin with. They like, let's do it again. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, it's good to have some beers for Tommy's pub with pu- Tommy's pub name on it. So that's awesome. Anyways, uh, let's talk about Jeff. Let's talk about anti scene, man. Where did all where did it all start? Where did all I'm sure it's like what seventies, eighties, <laughs> almost. <laughs> <laughs> it started in 1983. Okay, the year Empire Strikes Back came out. Yep. Yep. Um, I refer to a lot of things about around Star Wars films. Sorry. Well, I, I have to refer to times. Yeah. With pop culture too, it helps yeah. me keep it all straight. Yeah. Because I can't keep nothing in the 2000s straight at all. Me either. <laughs> I was just like, oh, what? That was 20 years ago? That was a blur. It's yeah. like, it's like, it was like the 90s, which is five years ago. Oh, shit. Yeah, no, it was. It's, cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's like after the uh, white, two, white, uh, white 2K scare. Yeah. That whole decade, you're like, yeah, then it's all a blur I, from I don't know what happened. happened. Everything's going to shut down. We're all going to die. And nothing happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So where did it all start then, or how did it all start? Yeah. Okay. Um, I moved to Charlotte in 1982. Okay. And was going to uh, Central Piedmont Community College. CPCC, yeah. To study uh, advertising design. Okay. And I started a, uh, I don't know, I don't think I had any bands while I was living here proper. But I had some bands when I was living back in New London, North Carolina, and we came and played the Milestone. I I went to the Milestone for the first time ever in 1981 to see Black Flag. Oh, I was about, I knew it. I on knew the you were say tour. that. I'm jealous. I didn't, you know, I always had to make this reference to people because they think, oh well, you know, you could just pull up to the club. This was before cell phones, before GPSs, before. Mm-hmm. Uh, MapQuest, you know, yeah. <laughs> we, we just pulled into Charlotte 
and went to places. Uh, how do you get to Tuckasegee Road? You know, <laughs> and uh, off of eighty five and turned down that street, and then yeah, yeah. And eventually took we a got what? there, yeah. and we must have passed the building ten times because back mm-hmm. then it was not. It didn't have anything painted on it. It said it was the milestone. I mean, it's just a house. And there was a strobe light going on in the uh, upper level. Yeah. And people would tell us, just look for the blinking light. You know, <laughs> we're like, okay. And we pull out, you know, we pull in there, go in. And, man, it, it's like we're small town guys, man. This is our first time ever going to see a club band. Yeah. It was scary. <laughs> we didn't know what to expect. And, you know. At this point, all we'd seen was arena rock and uh, oh, that kind of stuff. I mean, that's I mean, so bad. Yeah, that's. And we and, saw Black Flag at their ultimate peak. That was Hemi Rollins, though, right? Rollins' yeah. first tour with them. Wow. Robo was still playing. And man, when they started, it was it was like a bomb went off, man. Oh, it's like, see, I got getting goosebumps just yeah, talking about it. I mean, I wish I was there for that. Just to. Just to uh, to have been there and see that it was so inspiring not that oh i want to play that style of punk mm-hmm. rock but just you know that was what really was the uh blasting cap to make it to where it's like okay we gotta get we gotta start a band too yeah prior to that it was listening to the ramones and oh let's get a band you know we had a band we weren't very serious about it when we saw black flag we got really serious about it and so i met joe young he was working uh the mighty Joe Young. Mighty Joe. Yeah. He was uh working at the bar at the milestone for um a show from a New York band called The Stimulators. I've heard of them. Uh Harley Flanagan played drums for them when he was 13 years old. I think I have that on vinyl too. It's not that's it's got like a split pink and black cover on one of their albums, I think. I just know the single, and they had a roar cassette. Okay, all right, yeah. But um, when when they played the milestone, um, Harley wasn't with them anymore. I don't know what he was doing at that point, but they were just they were incredible. And I met Joe there, and uh, I saw him again when the um, half of the Sex Pistols were there. The Professionals. Do you know who you, about that band? No, I don't. The Professionals were uh, Paul Cook and Steve Jones with two other guys. And they played, they played, uh, you know, they, they, they played pretty vacant. Um, Anarchy in the UK. Are you a Sex Pistols fan? I love the Sex Pistols. Thank you. Okay, thank you. The Sex Pistols are one of my top, <laughs> favorite bands of all time. I do too, yeah. 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 And, and, and um, so I, I met Joe there. Yeah. And, and, and he said, I said, hey, man, I'm, I'm going to be moving to town soon you know like I'm, mm-hmm. I'm gonna start living here and i don't know why i i thought he might be a musician but he i said hey man i'm gonna start a band you, you you want to be in my band you know he's like oh yeah i play guitar all right well i'll i'll be here in uh in august you know and so let's yeah. get together and start and he went he went home and got his brother to give him a crash course on guitar hey man teach me some power <laughs> chords you know and uh he had a, uh, I think it was a little encore guitar, a little black encore guitar, mm-hmm. and a little tiny crate amp that looked like a wooden crate. That's what it was called. The, the, the company was Crate. It makes noise, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so, I remember those. And, yeah. and we started, uh, you know, doing some chords. And, and, and when we first started, there was another fella from Fayetteville. That was going to join. We were gonna, he was on guitar too. We were going to have two guitars like the Cramps. Okay. So we figured that was you know we'll have one play low and play one yeah. play the what became the patented uh, hold your ear drums. That's a, another group I, I didn't get to go see, which I should have. Uh, I had I had you chances. really should have. <laughs> I, had, I, had, I had fucking chances and I didn't. Which is now um, I I have what's called the Joe Strummer rule now. So. Um, a week before he died, and it was 2010, uh, we were going to go, me and my wife were going to drive to Atlanta to go see him, and we didn't, and he died. I never cried for any artist before in my life. I would remember watching MTV News that, that day. I forget, I think uh, Matt Penfield came on and said, oh, Joe Strummer died. 
And I said I was in Michigan on my mom's couch, and I started balling. So uh, I should have went. I'm also a big Clash fan. I love and the Clash. And I never got to see the me Clash. Either. Me either. I'm getting ahead of myself on the oh, anti really? yeah. but yeah. Let me come back to the Clash. Okay. 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 Remind me if okay. I if we get sidetracked. Okay. But um. So we were going to have this two guitar band, me singing, and we had a fellow named Mitch Cooper on drums. And um, the guy that was on guitar, man, uh, he was in the Air Force. And one day he just disappeared. And we don't we don't know where the hell he went. He was mm-hmm. gone for better part of a year. We never heard from him Holy again. Shit. Turns out he was over in uh, Lebanon or somewhere, and he couldn't tell nobody. Hey. And we're just like, well, yeah, well, of course we... We pushed on, you know, when we didn't hear from you for a month. We were like, well, I guess we got to find another guitar player. <laughs> phone call, yeah. <laughs> and we Hope got, that guy's okay. And yeah. and, and, and uh, Bill Cates uh, ended up playing bass for us. And uh, we met for the first time ever at my grandmother's woodshed in New London, North Carolina. And we taught those guys, you know, about five or six songs that we had. Mm-hmm. And so... It went really well that time. So we were, you know, like I'm talking first practice and we are ready. We're ready to go. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we were offered a slot opening for a thing called Punk in the Hills in Boone, North Carolina. And it was also the very first show that Fetch and Bones ever played. Yeah. Wait, in Boone? Boone, North Carolina. Oh, wow. At a place called The Barn. And it was indeed a barn. <laughs> but it was converted into a house yeah, and it yeah. had a loft and everything. I mean, it, it really cool place. And October 1st, 1983, we did our first show and we were headlining the thing. Wow. And, and from there on, it just snowballed, you know, and of course guys quit guys got shit canned, you know, all this stuff. Yeah. And, you know, and it was always me and Joe were the constant and, uh, it, it just seems to me, I guess now, that it seemed like a lot of stuff happened in short periods of time back then. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it just seems like now a year goes like that, and you it does. And, God and, and, damn. And, and, and you, yeah. you feel like maybe you didn't accomplish that much. Mm-hmm. But back then, man, it, it was changing so often, and like I guess it got to be around eighty. 85 is when we recorded our first ever record. It was called The Drastic EP. First song we ever wrote together was called She's Part of the Scene, and it's on that record. Got it, Ernest? Sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I was doing adjustments. Sorry. That's right. <laughs> you want me to keep talking until he cues it? Yeah, yeah. But um, which one was that? She's part of the scene. She's part of the scene. That was first a- song Joe and I ever wrote together. And uh, here it comes. Thank God for editing post. Yes. <laughs> Ernest is very good at editing. This, this kind of reminds me of Sheena is a punk rocker. That was probably our take on that. Yeah. <laughs> Which the only Ramon I ever saw was Marky. I never got a chance to see anyone else. So, yeah, it sucks. I, I'll never forget when we used to have Fat City. I walked into one and I'm like, hey, that looks like Marky Ramon on drums. Or like, that is Marky Ramon on drums. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he was playing with the intruders. Yes. Yeah, okay. But but, uh, but it just seemed like like quickly around 85, we um we turned into this other kind of thing, man. We we added a second guitarist, we had a bass player that was way older than us, but very skilled, which kind of set the groundwork for always having the bass player that could go all around, you know, mm-hmm. while we kept it. You know, just real basic. Yeah. And um, we we were kind of like a, I, I've always described it as a, a flea market version of Alice Cooper. Okay. But none of our props Man. looked good. None, none of do. our special effects were were professional. 
it was haphazard as hell. It was like taking a wheelbarrow and jumping a ramp with it. And <laughs> there's our show. <laughs> hey, thank you, everybody. You know, and, man, uh, if you only knew how big of an Alice Cooper fan I am, too. So, yeah. oh, man, it sounds like we like a lot yeah, of the same yeah, stuff. Hell of, yeah. show. hell of a show. Yes. Alice Cooper's also from my hometown. So, yeah. Detroit, yeah. Yep. Well, so I, I guess we evolved into what it just, it just seems like from 83 to about 87. We were still trying to figure out what exactly it is anti scene is supposed to be. And we ended up being a lot of different uh, things. Yeah. But the fact that we hadn't developed it yet didn't stop us. We were putting out, we were recording records. We recorded three records in that time period. We recorded a full length mm-hmm. album, two EPs. Well, and- your, your version of punk rock wasn't really like the big, the big. Clash punk rock or the big germs type of punk rock. It was a different kind of. It was it was different because we had so many different kinds of influences that a lot of these guys didn't have. And you know what? Right. One of those things was hmm. being from the south. Yeah. You know, Clash didn't have that. No. This was the, none of them. The Ramones. Uh, there were zero. No, no, there was nothing back then, no. man. And we, I don't think it was like we sat down and went, well, we're gonna just. You know, yeah. keep our southern thing up front. Mm-hmm. I don't think we ever decided that. It just kind of happened. Right. At about 88, when we were 87 or 88, we recorded the Blood of Freaks EP. And that pretty much solidified where the way we would be, yeah. you know, 30 um, something years past. So, still fucking doing it. Still awesome. doing it, man. Yeah. And, and I'm telling you, when we recorded that first record, um, we figured we'll we'll play a few shows. We'll put out a seven inch. Yeah. You know, we we'll get to play with our favorite bands like Black Flag and Fear and and all of them, and then we'll call it a day. We'll be done. You know, we yeah. never we never put a a time limit on this or. Or said, oh, man, we just got to keep going. We got to keep going. Yeah. But one of the things that I think, and it's easier to see in hindsight, my wife told me this. She was mentioning this the other day. It's just like, you know, y'all's, y'all's main drive was just being stubborn. And when, <laughs> and when people said, oh, yeah, f- you know, that band... They're going to be broke up in two years anyway. Mm-hmm. I mean, what what can they do beyond what they've done? You know, and we're just like, oh yeah, oh we'll show you. Yeah, yeah. We'll last ten more years. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't think I've ever heard the same set list twice at an anti scene show. No, unless always, you see us in consecutive nights, no, you probably it's, won't. It's always something new. So yeah. I mean, we got like I mean, what nine thousand songs to pick from. Yeah. So. yeah. So we try to keep it within that, you know, 200 or so. Last time I saw you was at the, uh, what's that, the Flying Burrito place in uh, Gastonia. I forget what that place was called. It was a restaurant oh, that you guys oh, played oh, at. Oh, oh, um, Freeman's Pub? Is no, that, no, no. It was a, you saw somewhere else in Gastonia? It was a restaurant that served Mexican food. In Gastonia? In, was it Gastonia or Belmont? I mean, it's the same. It's the same place, but man, I'm having, I'm having a hard time remembering that. And I've usually got a pretty damn good memory, but Russ was with you then. Then too, uh, you guys played some like alien song about outer space. Yeah, that Masters set. of the Sky. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hobby and I were like, well, we never heard that song. That's awesome. Matter yeah. of fact, I came, I came back in and asked you, hey, what fucking song was that, Jeff? You know, yeah, yeah Master of the Sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was by a buddy of ours from. Uh, Dallas, Texas, named Jack Starr. He recorded, uh, he was recording st- weird, freaky, far out stuff mm-hmm. back in the 60s and the 70s. And uh, we met him at Green Street Station in 1989. Do you know who the A Bones are? I've heard of them. From New York. Yeah. Um, they were backing him, backing Jack Starr up. Okay. And Man, I, I guess it was the southern thing, you know, southern yeah. Texas 
Southern thing, but he we hit it off with him so well. Meeting him for the first, I never heard of him until we were there that day. Really? He sure as hell never heard of us. No, no. But man, he he like he insisted that I come on stage with them, with the A Bones and him, and play Watchboard with them on a couple songs. Yeah. And man, to me, I was just like, oh man, this is this is incredible. You know, yeah. it was like this guy's all right. and and I stayed in touch with him uh, throughout the rest of his life, and and he wrote. Um, he didn't write Masters of the Sky for us, but he he told me, he said, man, I got this song about aliens because I think you guys could really do a good job on it. But then he did write one especially for us called Destroy Them All. And we still play that to this day from hey, time to time. Yeah, it, that might be... It's on Eat More Possum. That might be queued up, which is my favorite. No, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, Jack Star, Jack, yeah. Jack Star speaks on that record. Really? He, he's the one that says... Uh, you know, uh, beings of earth. You know, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he says, and at the end he goes, he's like, uh, you know, uh, 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 even the kid and the little puppy like anti scene. And he goes, uh, I'm Jack Star, and baby, you can believe what I say. That's awesome. <laughs> Actually, I think my my favorite anti scene song is Stormtrooper. Mm. Yep, that's a crowd favorite. Yep. There you go. I think the only the only other southern punk rock band besides you guys that I knew of before I moved to Charlotte was Avail. Out of From Virginia. Yes. Richmond, right? Right, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I, I moved down here. Um, I saw you guys actually before I saw Avail. You guys played the main stage at Tremont, which motherfucking John Tremont, if you don't get on this fucking show, <laughs> I've been trying to get him out. He said he would do it, and then he's kind of banished. So oh, okay, I, I'll yeah. talk to him. Okay, yeah, I'll yeah. talk to him for you. Oh uh, yeah, uh, Tremont, man, God, yeah. I'm so sad. John that Hayes. Place. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm so sad that place is gone, man. That's so hey, many good, so are good we. shows. So are we. Yeah, we are. So many good shows in that place. Now there's condos there, and I drive past there and kind of yes. cry and get sad. <laughs> there's all kinds oh, of so many good shows areas there. in this town that I just kind of, yeah. you know, have to choke it back they, when they I mean, walk you walk know, drive by. All right, just on a side thing. Everything that was cool about Charlotte when I first moved here is mm-hmm. gone. What year did you move here? 96. Yeah. There's still a lot of cool stuff going on here. Yeah. Now. That's uh, Dream Out <clears throat> has just opened. When I moved here, uh, the first show I saw there was uh, Guttermouth, The Descendants, and Less Than Jake. Great show. Guttermouth? Guttermouth. I think they... I worked security then. Did you? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That was a great show. Mm-hmm. You and my tattoo artist, I think Trey, worked there too. Uh, mm-hmm. the guy yeah, you, I remember him. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He's got some stories. <laughs> Every time I'm getting ink. We have stories about Tremont. He said uh, he has a lot of stories about funny stories about the insane clown boss. He put him when they played there. So yeah, those Anyways. were the those were the most um, shows where we were the most busy. Yes, because there was a lot of props to do and a lot of a lot of a uh, lot of things to uh, fight through, including well, big I, bottles of Fago. Yeah, <laughs> well, well, I'm kind of talking about the, the crowd having to control. Yeah. Uh, yeah, things going on in the crowd. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah it's, <laughs> it's Anyways. Nuts. Let's get back to anti scene. All right. Where did we leave off? 88? Yes. Okay. So I think so. So just, you know, um we started in 83. Here here it comes around. It's 93. Actually, it was let's go back to 92. We made we made a little bit of a big deal about being together five years. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, it's our five year anniversary show. Who did a big show at the milestone? Mm-hmm. And for some reason, to this day, I cannot figure out why we made a big deal about it being our ninth year. It's our ninth year show. It's going to be yeah. a special. Year. We had a nice flyer with the Ivan Koloff digging into Terry Funk, you know, and his like, mm-hmm. blood all over the place. And, and people were like going, well, you know, next year's your 10 t- year anniversary. I, you know, I, I, I'm just thinking it was a subconscious thing that we're just like, no way is this going to last 10 years. Right. No way. It did. 
And we made an even bigger deal of our 10-year anniversary. So then we said, well, you know, what are we going to do? Make a big deal out of 11 and 12? And then we're just like, let's do it in five-year increments. Ten and a half? Yeah, ten and a half. <laughs> <laughs> it was such a success. We want to do it again this year. But, uh, but yeah, we, we, start, we said, well, let's just do it in five-year increments. If, yeah. if we make it to 15, then we'll celebrate that. And by then, we kind of figured we, we, we weren't really kind of guessing about it anymore. Like, Okay, so when we do the twentieth, <laughs> what are we gonna, you know, that kind of thing, yeah. and all the way up till uh, next month when we do forty. And that's at Ground Zero, right? Ground Zero in Spartanburg yeah. on September thirtieth. I haven't been there in a long time. Well, you should go there September thirtieth. I think I will. Yeah, I think it's a fun it. night. Yeah, we're in. We're gonna have yeah. a lot of the old members coming up and playing with us. Trip, Trip will be there. Trip Trip's gonna there. play. And uh, I bought so many of my Star Wars stuff from Trip. A lot of stuff from Trip. Trip's the man when it comes to wheeling and dealing. It does, yeah. <laughs> and toys, by the way. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. Toys and uh, movies and all that stuff. Yeah. Yep. I love all Trip. He's got. He's. You know, I want to have him on the, on the podcast too because he's got some fucking. Oh, he's man. He would be man. great to have. He's, I, he's. He's. He's told me stories about being on the road. So yeah. Sometimes I have him on my podcast. That oh, I yeah. do. Yeah. And and man, when we talk, like we have a we'll have a plan. Mm-hmm. What we're gonna talk about. We never stick to it. No, no, no. We end up, you know, trailing off into all kinds of stuff. And it's always fun. Do people always enjoy us? He has some cool stories with with, with uh Rob Rob Helford. So mm. yeah, he's yep. like uh and that's awesome. I'm just, you know every sorry, every goddamn time I have a chance to go see Judas Priest. Something happens. Mm. I've missed him. Yep. You didn't go with me last time. Right. I missed him three times. So um, I forget what happened the first time. Second time, a, a storm came came through and the whole concert got canceled. Last, oh, was it with you and Deep, Deep Purple was going to be with him? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Deep Purple opened. Deep yeah. Purple and Judas Priest. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's good. That would have been. Oh, well, that was a hell of a yeah. show. I would no, That was the night I had to do when I worked at Scarewinds. They had uh, rehearsal night that 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 night. I'm like, all right, guys. It was funny because you know it's all kids that work there. I'm like, hey guys, I got a ticket to go see Judas Priest and Deep Purple tonight. They're like, They're like who's who? that? Who? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, never mind. I'm just. When, when this is Judas over, Priest, what is that? Yeah. A, a, a gospel group or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, when this is over, I'm leaving. But when it was over, the concert was over already. So I guess, I guess Priest opened that night because I guess they switched nights. So it would be deep. Was it one of them things where they were switching yeah, every so night? Yeah. I thought Deep, Deep, Deep Purple would open and they didn't. It was Priest that night. And I was like, screw it. Man, whatever. I've seen Jesus Priest a, a bunch of times. Yeah. First time, I guess, was Defenders of the Faith. Okay. I should have gone to see him on Screaming for Vengeance, That's a great but man, I, I, but but I um I had this attitude back then. If it ain't mm-hmm. punk, fuck it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, if it ain't <laughs> punk rock, I ain't going. And uh, my friends that would come and stay with at my apartment, which was very close to the Charlotte old old Charlotte Coliseum, mm. they'd come stay there after they went to shows, yeah. and they're like, "Man, you need to come with us to see." Priest. I said, no, I ain't going to see that. What if we buy your ticket? You know, well, they sprung the 750, you know? <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and, uh, Damn, what should I was that like, now? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, I'll go. And, man, I had a blast, you know? Man. And then they, and then they, they paid for me to go see Maiden on Number of the Beast uh, and oh, Dio yeah. on Sacred Heart. And then before long, man, I was concert guy just like yeah. they were. <laughs> <laughs> I loved. Well, we're 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 getting off. Yeah, we're we're. we're it's all right though. But when when punk rock and metal came together and formed something called thrash metal, it was beautiful, man. Fucking beautiful. So yeah, that's when. Um, that was when uh, our audience kind of split mm-hmm. because uh, the older heads that were coming to see us did not appreciate the. Marriage of punk and metal. Yeah. And the show's got a lot more violent. Okay, yeah. And this is also in time when we were probably drawing our biggest 
audiences yeah. local locally anyway, you know, and mm-hmm. um, like we'd play the milestone, there'd be three hundred people, you know, and uh, that's a lot of people for the milestone. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there'd be yeah. people all outside, everything, you know, they just, after a while, they just tell people we can't let nobody else in, you know, <laughs> and uh, um, I remember at one of our, I guess it was our 10-year anniversary show, this is back when Penny Craver was running. I Muslim. love Penny. I, That's someone you I, need to have on your show. I know. <laughs> but, well, but, speaking but, of Tremont, she she would actually she, could call me when I worked in the music store and say, hey, should I have this band on? Should I book this band? <laughs> Fuck yeah, you should book the band. The band was the Insane Clown Bosses, so yes. <laughs> well, I, man, man, you know, just to go back up there, yeah. I'll go back to Penny in yeah. a minute, but you know who the first band was supposed to be at Tremont? No. Bobby Womack, the soul really? singer. Wow. Penny goes, Jeff, I might be able to get Bobby Womack. I'm like, Really? <laughs> it's just like that'd have been yeah. awesome. She's yeah. like, I'm thinking about having it to where we have tables, you know, and people sit at tables. And I was like, Bobby Womack is gonna play here in this building where I just painted a gigantic rat holding a liquor bottle. Bobby Womack is gonna be here. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I think so. <laughs> but it didn't turn out. It didn't pan out. They uh, first show ended up being the uh, Southern Cultural and the Skids were the first band to ever play Tree Mom. Really? Yeah. I did not know that. Yes. Yeah. But back to Penny. What was I even saying about Penny? Oh, yeah. She was running the milestone when we did our 10-year anniversary show. Okay. And she always hired a bunch of the guys that were, like, uh, ex-military mm-hmm. to do the security because it it was really rough, like, yeah. real rough. And uh, I remember the co-owners, Maggie and um, – uh, man, I, my, the name is just, like, leaving me right now. I'm so terrible with names, man. But Maggie was a, one of the co, co-owners of the milestone. Yeah. And, and she says, she walked through the crowd and she said, and she was like holding, you know, pushing people out of their backs. And she goes, well, anti-scene has the, the biggest number of people packing of any crowd we've ever had here. <laughs> <laughs> There's no uh, metal de- de- detector going under the None of that back road. then, no, man. No. no, 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 no. It's actually funny. The, the last show I went to, me and, me and Ernest went to go see The Offspring a yeah. few weeks back, which I'm not a huge fan of. But, you know, like I was saying earlier, I, I just I try and hit up shows of bands I've never seen. And I went through the damn metal detector with my vest on. Normally, I get the scan. They're like, no, nah, just go on. Like really? They didn't say shit. No, I was like, really? really? I was like, wow. Yeah, I, I, I don't know I, if that was that I, gate. I, I don't know, but I I'm went like, to a show the next week, and I ended up getting wanded. Yeah, I, so I was, I was, I was like, expecting okay, that to this happen. Is different. Yeah, he was like, no, man, just go through. I'm like, oh shit, okay. Well, I could have packed the gun and walked up in there tonight, oh, but yeah. oh well. Yeah, yeah I, I was shocked at that. Yeah. Which, by the way, the offspring was. If you want to go see a band that's very energetic. And a band that's sold out, totally sell out, it's fun. Yeah, it was, it was, it was yeah. a fun show. Yeah, it was. I've seen them before, too, also doing yeah. security. Really? For them. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I saw a ton of bands I'm sure, yeah. just working yeah. security. And, yeah. and you know, traveling, playing mm-hmm. ourselves, we ended up seeing a lot of them. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> <laughs> Squirrel, the have all the time. So uh, we left off 1993, I think. Yeah, 93, 10 years, 10 year mark. Yeah, yeah. And uh, then we we did, uh, you know, 15 was in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. 20, 20 and 25 was back here at uh, Tremont. Yeah. 25th is when we had the hookers and uh, the meat men nice with us wow really yeah wow that would have been good yeah and um yeah tesco v is a good good friend of mine and who's who's the coolest band you guys have ever opened for or or, the coolest band we ever opened for yeah or 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 vice vice versa who's who's the coolest band that's ever opened for you guys man i gotta think about this for a minute um there's there's several bands that i was just like when I knew we were on the bill together, mm-hmm. I was like, 
Oh man, this is gonna be so good. I know you guys just did a show in Atlanta with Fear. And Fear was one of those bands. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'll tell you, in, in 1996, when Trip was in the band, yeah. we toured the East Coast with uh, Fear. Oh, that's and that awesome. was it was so great. I was gonna told you I was gonna tell you something about yeah. that. Um, okay. You know, at sound checks and all that stuff, you mm-hmm. get to where you talk to the other bands and stuff. Yeah. And and leaving was also a little bit um, impressed with us being playing this kind of music and being Southern. Yeah. And he is a huge country music fan. Is he really? And we, we were talking about Charlotte, and the first, of course, the first thing that came up was Randy Travis. Because mm-hmm. he's from uh, the area, you yeah. know. And um, Marshville. All right. Yep. Yeah. Marshville. And um, so we're talking about it, you know, we're just, and, and so it's fear, fear sound checks first. And when uh, Lee was doing his uh, vocals check, he just starts singing On the Other Hand by Randy Travis. And, man, it was amazing. This was before cell phones. I didn't think. You know, we were just sitting there watching like, man, this is incredible. You were we're watching never... Leaving yeah. sing a Randy Travis song. And he sung the whole song. Wow. And we were just like, this is so good. You, know? you would have never <laughs> thought that, though. No. <laughs> and so... We were in, in Boston at a club called called uh, Mama Ken's that was Aerosmith a, based, right? Yeah. By Aerosmith, yeah. yeah. You can tell clubs yeah. that are open by people that play versus... <laughs> well, it's also called Mama Ken, yeah. Right. Yeah. Because of the song, yeah. right. And um, so every night we had been playing the old uh, <clears throat> 50 or 60s, I think it was the 60s, Song by an artist named Jumpin' Gene Simmons, not mm-hmm. to be confused with the guy from Kiss. Yeah. It was called Haunted House. Ooh. And we played that uh, in the middle of our shows. And Lee came up to me at one point and says, Hey, uh, I'd like to come on with you guys and do Haunted House. And oh, we're just like, yeah. <laughs> We'll do okay. Haunted House 10 times in a row if you yeah. want, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so he comes on. With us in, mm-hmm. in Boston, and he does it, and man, it is incredible. Of course, we have we have one photo of it of him singing in the microphone to my right, and me holding the mic and just looking at him like I can't believe I'm on. He's stage fucking standing right here doing it with us, yeah. And and so we figured that was that. Okay, we mm-hmm. you know it was in Boston, big crowd, everyone got to see it. All right, we're good. Next night we're playing in his hometown of Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. You know. And we're at the, the Theater of Living Arts. Big crowd here, too. And uh, we're, we're we're tearing through our set, you know. It's yeah. like, and see, I start Haunted House, so there was no count off and the band taking off. You know, I had, yeah. to, they had to wait for me. And I'm getting a drink of water, and I see Lee come walking out. I was like, man, we didn't even ask him. And this is his hometown. We didn't ask him because we're like, this is his hometown show. Yeah. Of course, he wants to, he wants to come out with you yeah. know, his band, you know. But now nah, he came out and he did it with us again, man. Uh, fuck yeah! And, I, and and there is no record of that, no recording, no photos, nothing. And Damn. Uh, and I was just like, man, I cannot believe it. We had leaving do haunted house with us two nights in a row, you know. That's awesome. So so that's that's one of the things. And man, we've had bands open for us before. That people would never like. It, it, I, I tell people sometimes, and they're just like, "No, no, you didn't." You know, Blink Blink One Eighty Two open for us one time. Are you kidding me? With Fear in wow. New York, it's just Blink One Eighty Two, us, and then Fear. No shit. <laughs> at, at Irving <laughs> Plaza. Wow. Helmet open for us. Before. Wow. Um, Clutch open for us before. Jesus. Wow. I love Clutch. Yeah, and, you know it's like. These bands, you know, and we we didn't, uh, there was nothing to indicate to us that they were going to be huge one day, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah, we thought we were going to be. You are huge. Well, yeah. We're the, we're the biggest uh, band that no one's ever heard of. You know, you, know, you, know, you know what, it would, <laughs> what is funny is that I will ask a lot of people, uh, you know, I tell them where I'm from. They're like, oh, you know, what are the big bands from? Your area, and I'll ask him. I'll say, "All right, are you a bigger fan of COC or anti scene?" And it's it's 
it, it's always mixed. Yeah. It's always mixed. And they're all, it's one or the other. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people are like, I didn't know COC was from North Carolina. I'm like, yeah, from fucking Raleigh, man. So, yeah. Which uh, I've met Pepper a few times. He's a cool ass dude. Yeah. Um, but he's weird too, man. So he just, you know what, though, man? He doesn't we, like to talk. We, we, like, I saw COC in the very, like, I saw him with every singer they ever had, mm -hmm. I think. Like, yeah. like early on, you know, when, and you, I've known those guys forever. And we've shared the stage only a handful of times. Really? Yeah. But we were playing. We were playing with the obsessed and I hate God down in uh, New Orleans, and Pepper came out, and he, he was having a hell of a good time. Really? And when we got done, he just came up to me and he just hugged me and he was just smiling at me. He just goes, "You guys are like a redneck Ramones." <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> and in my head, I'm going, well, yeah. "Damn, Pepper, where you been?" For, yeah, you know? it's yeah. <laughs> Like 350 years, you know, yeah. but, uh, yeah. Okay. I'll take that. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, you know, they're cool yeah, guys. That's and, uh, that's a, yeah, that's a good one. I never thought of that. But Redneck. Yeah. yeah. Ramones. Redneck yeah. Ramones. I like it. Yeah. And like people ask who your influence is. And I said, the Ramones. And they go, mm -hmm. wait, wait, y'all don't sound like the Ramones. I was like, well, no, we're not. You're, you're your own version we're, of the Ramones. It's not poppy. And and we have way more, uh, you know, bluesy influence than the Ramones ever did. But the whole presentation is lifted mm -hmm. right off of it. Like there was a time when we all wore the the uh, leather jackets until I traded that for flannel, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, but you know the whole setup, the one guitar, one bass, you know, it, yeah. like everything. If you sat there and really watched it, you go, okay, I, I see. I, I I can see the Ramones connection. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's there. I, I see it. Yeah, definitely. So uh, I know you guys put out a new album. Yes, sir. It's called Great Disasters. Mm. Can we play something off that, Ernest? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If you can see what that is, uh, it's pretty funny. <laughs> that, but the albums aren't listed here, so. I'm oh, sorry. It's the uh, what's the, the 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 track off the wreck everything. That's it. Yeah. Anyways, I haven't heard it yet, but I've I've seen you advertising it the uh, uh, the new vinyl. It's yellow splatter, right? Or yeah, yeah. One version of it. There's oh. three different versions. Okay. Ooh, I like it. What a surprise. It's more of the same. Yeah. <laughs> At least no one can say anti scene chasers sound and they suck now. I mean, it's all the same. I mean, it's, it's, uh, well, you know, we, we, like, like one thing we don't get the credit for is that we do, um, experiment in other musical styles from time to time, but it all still sounds like us, yeah. you know. I, I always thought if I were to, for, front of band i'd sound just like you at, at least yeah. that's what my wife said she goes she goes if you were to front a band you'd be like jeff clayton and like buju bantan in the, <laughs> in the same damn person <laughs> well that's good company yeah <laughs> um what's next franchise scene i i you, uh, you guys are, are going to tour for this album, though, though right? Mm -hmm. You guys are going to tour for this album, right? We have not toured for this album yet. We're doing the anniversary show on in September, and then we will tour. We will do start doing touring to promote the album in twenty four. I know that's bass backwards, but the world is bass backwards these yeah, days, so yeah, it yeah. doesn't matter. But uh, say that again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, but um, plus. Our members are scattered all over the eastern seaboard now. Yeah. Our guitar player is from Hattiesburg, Mississippi, named Walt Wheat. Oh, really? Yeah. And uh, our bass player is from Newtown, Connecticut, named Malcolm Tent. And Barry, Sir Barry Hannibal lives in Concord, and I'm here in Charlotte. And uh, Wow. 
But you know what? Having uh, the band so spread out has been a real benefit in a way that when we do get together, we take care of a lot of things in the mm. limited amount of time that we have. Yeah. And we, um, we've got two, two records, two more records in the can now. Really? Not, at, not fully the albums. One's but. a single. Uh, we're doing a song about George South. Oh, cool. Called uh, Bootleg Preacher, The Ballad of George South. I want to hear that. Yeah. He's going to be on it with us. Awesome. And uh, so we we started working on that. We're doing a, a 12-inch EP called The Anti-Scene Time Machine. And we will also be working on a compil. It's a it's a re-recorded compilation. I know that sounds very complicated, but what we're doing is we've, you know, over the years we've done a probably a dozen uh, songs about wrestling. Yeah. And people want them all together. We had a, we had a CD of it one time called false count anywhere. And it was all the wrestling songs, yeah. but, but see all of them have such different uh, recording qualities that we were just like, you know what? Oh, uh, they, yeah. It all, it all sounds with, 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 yeah. with, with uh, this lineup now, yeah, we are, can. Are you gonna re re? We're gonna re record every oh, wrestling awesome. song, and they're all gonna be consistent. Fuck you, Cactus Jack, you Dear are, Abby yeah. about Abdul the Butcher, yeah. False Count, or no, no, it's the name of the record. Um, <laughs> from, from parts unknown about mask wrestlers, yeah, exploding barbed wire death match. Don't you have one about Hogan too? Mm-mm. No, you don't have one. Okay. Mm-mm. Sorry. And uh, nah. yeah, there's somebody else. <laughs> and uh, the mysterious green mist about Muda, Kabuki, and Tajiri. Oh yeah, you know the Japanese yeah, wrestlers. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And, uh, of course, Funk you that you played at the beginning of the show. Didn't the missing link also also spit uh, mist? Uh, George Steele used to have the green tongue. Yeah. I don't, I, I, don't, the, I don't know if Missing Link spit the mist or not, man. You may be right about that. I think he did. Okay. I don't know. But it's... I, I, I could be, be... He was a very sh- short-lived right. wrestler, but yeah. It, it's kind of linked yeah. mainly to yeah. Muda and yeah. uh, Kabuki. The great Muda is one of the greatest of all, of all time. I'm glad they put him in the Hall of Fame, too, so yeah. Wait till you see the back cover picture that's going to be on that George South single. We're We're putting... We see both those songs, George's song, and we did a re-recording of the Mysterious Screen Mist. They're both. It's it's. First of all, it's to introduce the George South song. Yeah. And George's parts are going to be different. The single version is going to be different from the one that comes out on the album. Okay. That we have George do, and but the the B side is Mysterious Screen Mist, and we've got a photo and. Uh, it is one of the most perfect pictures you could ever see of Muda spitting the mist into George's face. Oh. And the picture is so incredible because George's mouth is wide open. <laughs> I can't wait to see that. He explained to us what happened. He says, Muda missed his cue. Oh. And, you know, he walks around with that stuff yeah, in his yeah, mouth the yeah. whole time. And he missed his cue. And George went, like, like. Tapped him like, hey, hey get me. Like, and we did. Muda goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> and George's face, the inside of his mouth is green. And his, his eyes are just like, well, I did. He said, Jeff, I walked around for four days green. He said, I went to Walmart with a green face. <laughs> <laughs> it's like after going to a guar show, yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that that's the single. And uh, and then we're doing anti-scene time. Sh- what, I said that. Yeah. And so there, there's three records coming out in 24 as we start touring and playing uh, a set that's heavy with uh, stuff from Great Disasters. Okay. Awesome. <clears throat> all right. Help. From the engineering side, where do y'all usually record? Oh. We set up in a big warehouse and record the guitar, bass, and drum track the basic tracks we record all that live oh, and, okay. and and we like uh barry tracks it himself we, we have a guy that we're working with named uh named uh, jimmy tutterow who runs a studio out of uh uh granite falls okay yeah. and um up towards 
Hickory? Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, no, no. Up toward uh, Salisbury. That's right. Okay. Yeah. That's and, right. Um, um, and they work together. Like, they come track it where we are. We just we just prefer the playing it as live as possible. Mm-hmm. I'll go back and do my vocals over, you know, right. after they're done. But um, but then they take it back to the studio. They mix everything when, you know, we've already done the overdubs and all that. And, right. Uh, and so that's that's pretty much how it's been done now for uh, I don't know I guess the I guess since 2020. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, I wanted to go back and talk about something we started to touch on mm. the Clash. Mm, yes, yes, man. They're my favorite band of all time. Listen, man, I I, I don't know if I can talk about the Clash without getting emotional, and I and I'll tell you I. That is a band that I simply loved. I loved them. I loved everything they did. Yep. Except for Cut the Crap. Mm-hmm. I didn't like that. But but he, the thing I loved about them was the the songwriting and the singing of Joe Strummer and Mick Jones. Yes. And I never got to see them. And, you know, I had a chance to see them, but guess who I went to see instead? The Sex Pistols. Uh-uh. I never saw them. Oh. I've seen three fourths of them. Oh yeah, I, that's <laughs> I saw uh, Cook and Jones, yeah, and then yeah, I saw yeah. Rotten with uh, yeah. PIL. But um, <clears throat> uh, the Clash was playing in Columbia, South Carolina, in 1984, I guess, and Black Flag was uh, touring for My War. And I went to see Black Flag. <laughs> my War is my favorite Black Flag, Black Flag album. So. I mean, look, man, I saw a legendary show that yeah. night. It was good, but man, when I when I go back in time, I think about I could have seen the Clash, and that's when I guess they were touring for Combat Rock at this point. That was in her prime then, yeah. <laughs> man, that's like, yeah. But but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this though, I did get to see. Um, big audio dynamite. See, <clears throat> fucked up there too. I should have went there, but I didn't. But you know where I had to go? I had to go to New York City to see him. See, I would have had to go to <clears throat> Chicago. Mm. That well, see, right fast. Yeah. Th- well, see, this would have been when they put out number number ten Upping Street. Yeah. And they were doing a residency at Irving Plaza in New York City. Oh wow! And I just flew up there on a whim that I'd be able to get in, but they said, man, sold out. They had to add four more shows at the end of the week. But I'm like, that don't help me, man. I flew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, yeah. so uh, me and me and my friends were walking around. We're just like, bum, man, we're not going to get big on your dynamite, man. It's like, we walked by Irving Plaza just in hopes that somebody was scalping tickets. My friend went up to the, Ticket booth. And he says, man, they still got tickets. And we man, we bought the tickets, man. We went in. And I'm going to tell you what, man, that was a virtual who's who of music. Just hanging out in the place. I'm sure, yeah. I mean, um, the buddy of mine that lived up there that we were staying with, yeah. he went to see him two nights prior. Mm-hmm. And he says, man, you ain't going to believe who all was there. He, just, he said, uh, Mick Jagger? Was wow. there? Wow. He said, um, Dave Stewart from the Eurythmics. Wow. And uh, so the night we're there, it's a Saturday night, man. Oh, it's and, probably. And listen to who all showed up to this. I, I mean, it's like we're, we're sitting there in the crowd, you know, and we're just like, that's, uh, yeah, that's, you know, it was like Jimmy Cliff, reggae artist. No shit. He was there. Steel Pulse, the whole band. Wow. Was right there. And then. We're down on the floor, you know, and uh, we look up at the thing, and you notice they put one of those velvet ropes up there. Yeah. David Bowie and his entourage is up there. Shit. Wow. Right? And so I'm just like, man, this is incredible. And like they played, uh, when they closed the show, they played 1999 by Prince. Oh. It was fuck amazing, dude. man. And then. Uh, I'm jealous as hell. I'm year, so fucking jealous. Years man. and years later. <laughs> That's years like an and years awesome later, night. I yeah. saw uh, Mick Jones with Tony James from uh, Generation X. Wow. 
they had a band together called Carbon Silicon. Mm-hmm. And it had Leon uh, Easy Kill Williams from uh, Big Audio Dynamite was in that band too. And so uh, I don't know if you ever knew this about The Clash, but, you know, they were real uh, pro meeting their audience yes. after the shows. Yes. You know, they, they were always made room for that. You know, as long as people weren't being Assholes. crazy about yeah, it. Yeah. Right. You know, and it's like, and Mick Jones was the same. <clears throat> And I had gone earlier to see him at an in-store there in Don't Atlanta. Don't tell me you met Mick Jones. I met Mick Jones. Oh, fuck. And, man, I was talking to him. Like, I, I was there with my, my girlfriend at the time. And, I, <laughs> and she says, you know, Jeff, uh, you might be bugging him. <laughs> I, like, I don't care. I was like, hey, 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 Mick, can you sign this one? Yeah. Hey, go get a picture. You know, yeah. <laughs> and I was just, man, I was giddy. I could not believe yeah, it. And I'd he probably was be the so, same way. He was so accommodating. Even if I was, if I was being obnoxious to him, it wasn't yeah. that I was one of these drunk, obnoxious yeah. fans that you want to knock out. He's probably just like, I got to get away from this guy before he takes 900 more pictures, <laughs> you know, but, uh, or, or has me sign 600 yeah. more things, you know, and I was just like, I got him to sign my Clash singles box set. Uh, I got him to sign um, a, a copy of Number Ten Up in Street. I didn't bring everything. I had. Yeah. <laughs> it's like he had probably been like, uh, "We got to cut this off," you know. But yeah, all right, dude. Yeah. But man, I got to see. I got to see. It, and I told him, I said, "I said, man, I saw you guys at Irving Plaza when you did the residency." And he said, I, "And I said I was there the night Bowie came." He go and he named. He rattled off the date. Wow. Oh, that was blah, 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 19 or two, yeah, 1984. He remembered the date. Wow. But man, that's like when I when I left there, I was just you know, it's like I just met one of the guys in my favorite bands of all time. I I met the Ramones. And I got along great with Joey. I got along great with Johnny. Uh, Marky, I got to even sing with Marky's band one time and do really? Blitz Creek Bach with Marky Ramon playing behind That's me. That's awesome. You know, and I'm going to yeah. tell you, I, I, I don't mean to to say this stuff like I'm name dropping and... Uh, no, and, no, you know, no, 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 no. Is... It, man, I'm telling you, I'm a fan, and, and it's, mm-hmm. it still resonates with me. I don't take it for granted at all. I consider it to be have been a great blessing to be able to get as close to some of these people as I've been able to get, you know, and, yeah. um, uh, I, I never, I never, ever, ever take it for granted. And, you know, and with, with the older we get and the more we lose people every day, you know, I, yeah, I know even, it's crazy. There are a lot of people gone. Mick Jones is still alive. So there's a chance. Still alive, yeah. There's a chance I could possibly meet Mick Jones at some point in my life. Yep. Yeah. He, like I said, he was very accommodating yeah. and he's like very appreciative of his life. And you know, man, those guys taught me, taught me how to be. Yeah. How to be. Because I have met plenty of guys that acted like their audience owed them something. Mm-hmm. I met plenty of guys that acted like, man, <clears throat> I, I ain't got the time for you, man. But I'm just like, I, I'm just I, like, well, I man, have to, a bunch of asshole people. But if it yeah. wasn't for me, you're you a fan. have no reason fan, to even yeah. be yeah. here. Maybe yeah. not me personally, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, but me and all these, all these guys behind me, guys yeah. and gals behind me. You know, I, I'm not saying that I, it, it's a weird thing because uh, you do owe something to your audience. Now, when it starts to get personal and they want to crowd into your uh, your family life or your personal space, that's different. It, it, if they come knocking on your on your door, yeah. But but if you're at a show. And somebody wants you to sign their shit. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna sign their shit. Yeah. And I and and I'm gonna tell you, this is a very unpopular uh, opinion about all this. But uh, like at the 40 year anniversary show, we'll be doing a meet and greet from six to eight. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling people, bring everything you have. Bring yeah. it because we're not gonna charge you extra. We're we're just gonna sit there for two hours and sign the shit that you bought. That makes you want to be there. Yeah. And we're going to sign every single piece of it. That's awesome. I've told every member of this band, I said, I said, I don't give a shit. If we're in a hurry, we got to go. I said, if these people bring their stuff to get signed, we're signing every piece of it. And if they want a picture, they get a picture. Yeah. 
You know, we do it all. It's like, it's it's not up for discussion. I'm bringing, and we've, a, we've I'm bringing never, a bottle of Yingling. <laughs> and, and, and the thing is, man, I you know, even when I have been uh, probably in a foul mood for whatever reason, mm-hmm. I never, ever have tried, have allowed to let myself take it out on a, somebody who's just coming to see me for the first time and they're excited, you know? Yeah. Try to put all that aside. Uh, try to remember what it was like. When, when, yeah, when, you know, you, you don't want to ruin their ex- experience with you. Right. And, then, and then they walk away saying, Jeff, Jeff, Clayton's an asshole. I've met many artists that were a- assholes. And I mean, I still I have too. Yeah, but there's a, a lot of guys I've met that were cool as fuck, man. So, yeah. And man, the thing is that both, uh, either, either end of that spectrum, mm-hmm. stays with you forever. It does, yeah. So I've told this story before on the podcast. Uh, Public Enemy played um, Amos's. I met Chuck that night. He was cool as fuck. Flavor Flav, straight up fucking asshole. Just a dickhead, man. I was like, yeah, that fucking blows, man. <clears throat> Chuck. Sign anything anyone brought up to him. There was a dude that walked up with the, with the stack of records, this damn tall. And Chuck's stayed there and signed everything. Flavor refused to sign anything, let alone talk to any anybody that showed up. I, I walked up to him. I was like, yo, what's up, Flavor? He's like, man, fuck you. Fuck you. Yeah, I was like, oh, okay. Damn. <laughs> I said, nah, man, it's fuck you. And I was and like, all, all the right, money cool. I just spent hey, coming you. to see you. Well, it was funny because right when he was on stage, he's like, we all... Need to be nice and great to each other and unity and all this other bullshit. He got off stage and that old shit went out the door, dude. So yeah, and, the guy who gives less to that group than anybody else. Yeah, uh-huh. sure. Yeah. Well, I have people all the time write me, email me, even yeah. tell me in person. They said, "Man, anti scene is one of the best bands to their fans mm-hmm. of any group we've ever seen." You know, and I was like, "Yeah, that's awesome." And and that's something I'm real proud of. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're, they're, I, I'm not going to sit there and tell you. I'm not going to say, "Oh, there is nobody out there would tell you Jeff Clayton's a, a fucking asshole." Well, there's some, and yeah. and, and I and I, I don't. I'm not saying that sometimes they didn't deserve it <laughs> because, <laughs> because because sometimes when they're asking for it, yeah. I will deliver. Yeah. <laughs> but mo- I, I would say 99. percent of our audience that really appreciate us are really, really good people. Yeah. And and I, there's no way we'd be doing this for 40 years. 40 fucking years. If 40 That's years, awesome. if we were the assholes that most people yeah. think we are. <laughs> that would have been nipped in the bud real quick, I think, at some point. Yeah. Uh, you guys just keep putting out quality albums and uh, putting out some kick-ass shows. I think I've seen you guys here. I've seen you guys at Freeman's, at Tremont. I've seen you all over the place. So, yeah. Well, I appreciate it. Well, thank you for being on, on the show, Jeff. Man, thank you for having me. I've had a good time. Uh, season four, season finale. Uh, we're going to take a break for, I don't know, a little while, and then we'll start season five at some point. Five years. Five, no. Oh, okay. No, it's actually four seasons wrapped into like two years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We don't stop. Maybe we'll take a month break. Yeah, maybe. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you, Jeff. Cheers. Thank you. Adios, guys. Have a good night. Shout out to our gracious host, Tommy's Pub. Located at 3124 East Wade Drive, Tommy's Pub is a small neighborhood bar that's big on music and community. Go to Tommy's Pub's Facebook page where they regularly provide updates about upcoming events to include weekly open mic night, karaoke, and live music from some of the best up-and-coming bands in the Queen City. Thank you, Tommy's Pub, for hosting M Vibes Podcast. We have a lot of interesting episodes coming up about music's most interesting topics. 
but we want to hear from you and what episodes you'd like to hear. If you have an idea for anything we should talk about, email us at mbuyspodcast at gmail.com. This episode was produced by BWM Productions. If you like our podcast, please help us by rating and reviewing us on your favorite listening platform. And follow us on Instagram and Facebook at mbuyspodcast. Come on and join in the conversation. Hey, gonna stop! 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 Hey, gonna stop!